I'm Dr. Helen Chersky. I'm a physicist and I'm really enthusiastic about the physics in the everyday world. What I study in my academic life is bubbles and this is one of my favourite demonstrations about how bubbles can show us something about what the world is doing and it's a pattern you see in lots of places. What I've got here is a bottle of lemonade, it's not been opened, and some raisins, which is not the most obvious combination, but bear with me. I'm going to start by taking the lid off the bottle and we'll see how much it was shaken up on the way here. Okay, right, we escaped without a fountain. So what's happening is there's lots of gas that's coming out of the lemonade and you can see all the bubbles here. What I'm going to do is to put some raisins into the top of the bottle. So just ordinary raisins. And you can see that they are not just sinking to the bottom, they're dancing. This is a great thing to do at a party if you're bored. Uh, find some party snacks and some lemonade and keep yourself entertained. What's happening here then is that the raisins are more dense than the lemonade, so they're sinking to the bottom, but when they're down the bottom, they're growing themselves little life jackets of bubbles. And once they've got enough bubbles on them, they're floating up to the surface. And at the surface, they're sort of turning round until they've got rid of all their bubbles, and then they're sinking back down because they're more dense. So what's going on is that the lemonade has lots of gas dissolved in it. And all of that gas, once we've released the pressure by taking the lid off, all of that gas wants to come out a solution, but it needs a starting point. And a raisin is a really good starting point because it's got these sort of wrinkles in it, these little V-shapes. And down in the V-shape of a raisin, there's a tiny little pocket of gas to start with. And so that's very, it's very easy for that to grow. It's very hard to start a brand new bubble. It's very easy to grow a bubble that's already there. So these raisins down the bottom and their little wrinkles are the perfect place for bubbles to grow. And as the bubbles grow and they grow a life jacket, the raisin takes up a bigger volume, but there isn't much more stuff. And so it's less dense than the water and it rises up to the surface. And once it's got rid of its bubbles at the top, it falls back down. And this sort of bubble lava lamp, this will keep going for about half an hour. Um, it's very therapeutic to watch. But this pattern of less dense things floating and more dense things sinking happens in lots and lots of places. And one of those places resulted in a huge tragedy. So the Titanic, um, in the North Atlantic when it sank in 1912 was a vast ship and it was floating. The whole thing was floating because overall it was less dense than the water. It was like one of these little raisins up at the surface while it was coated in bubbles. It was safe because it was floating. And along the bottom of the Titanic underneath there were bulkheads, um, spa air-filled spaces that were full of air just like the bubbles on the raisins here. And they were keeping the ship less dense than the water. And when the Titanic struck the iceberg, it basically popped those air-filled spaces so water could get in. And just like the raisins here losing their bubbles, the Titanic then became more dense than the water around it, and it sank to the bottom of the ocean. And it just so happens that if you look at the length of an average raisin and the depth of the lemonade bottle here, the size of this raisin relative to that depth is about the size of the Titanic relative to the depth of the water she sank in. So just like the raisins here, losing their bubbles, losing their buoyancy, becoming less dense, the Titanic drifted all the way down to the bottom of the ocean. 